Thank you so much for staying with us. We have a very interesting uh, subject we want to discuss right now in studio. Land use planning has a checkered history in Zimbabwe, but despite this, it remains a key to success, particularly in the agriculture sector. We are joined in a studio by Mr. Nyamu Fukuza to tell us more about land use. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank you so much. Welcome to Good Morning Zimbabwe. It's, it's actually my pleasure to be here. So let's just get right into it. Please tell us what is land use planning and uh, what, why would farmers or the generality of Zimbabweans need to embark on it? Okay, so general land use planning is a conscious decision that we take uh, to plan each and every hectare that you have at your farm or um, wherever that you want to practice agriculture so that we unlock the benefits that are involved within that land use, within that land, and uh, assess the potential of that land so that whatever that you're going to put there is going to be put and produced up to the maximum based on its potential. So yeah. what does the process entail? Can you just quickly summarize that process? Okay, so the process involves a conscious decision by selecting a course of action that is involved. So the general, particularly for our land use plan, we've got generally five uh, stages that we have. The first one is uh, the fir the we, we involve the selection, the assessment of the land, uh, the capacity of the land. We are assessing the ability of the, the land based on variety of factors. Uh, for example, general, I want to I want to refer you back to a historical background where in 1961 we've got guys who managed to plan the whole of Zimbabwe into um, the region one. I'm sure you now understand that we've got uh, Manika land, this is region one up to region five. That was a land use plan that was done primarily focusing on two things, mm -hmm. which is uh, the climate in, in general, but uh, temperature and rainfall in, in some, in just in brief. Mm -hmm. So when we comes to the land use plan for a farmer now, we are now incorporating a lot of factors that is going to determine what a farmer should put. We are talking about if it is a farmer who has got, uh, we, we are now migrating from a natural region to a natural area, which is your particular farm. So it, we, if, it's, if it is now a, part, a natural area, we are no longer going to f mainly focus on two things. We are now going to focus on a lot of things, which is things to do with the, if you want to put, let's say, tobacco, where are you going to get that labor? It's a factor that is going to determine the, the what you're going, we are supposed to put. If you want to put, let's say, blueberries, a lot of Zimbabweans do not know that uh, blueberries are one of the uh, the flagship crops that can actually change your life. Mm -hmm. But to do so, you need to, to take into consideration things like, who is going to, are we going to hire labor or we are going to make use of the labor that is already available in the local? So it's one of the factors that we consider. We consider the soil itself. You understand that there are soil, certain soil types in terms of the texture, in terms of the, 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 the nutrition itself. Uh, does that soil in, have sufficient nutrients to support the, the proposed uh, enterprise? We also look at the slope of the land. We am sure you understand that if we are to look at the general map of the Zimbabwe from the from the eastern highlands mm -hmm. to the central watershed up to Matabeled, and there is a decline, there is a, a change in slope. So that is why you see that most of the regions that we actually have got uh, specific crops that we say this is a crop that can fit in this part and this cannot fit because of the slope. Then that's another issue that we take into consideration. The other thing that we take into consider is the uh, the availability of water. I'm sure you understand that water is water is life. Water. So is this is like mm -hmm. a science, like literally, it's a science. It's this whole process is that's a science. True. It's actually I thought science. it was all about <laughs> Rudo has a piece of land yeah. and um, 
she plants if it's a summer crop i just put it in there but i'm seeing that there's a whole lot more science that's true. behind this that's true that is why you see that a lot of our former farmers they were actually producing something that we can actually say they are producing decent results mm -hmm. is because they were taking those conscious decisions and say mm -hmm. no i cannot just say we, i'm sure you've i heard the farmers asking what can i grow right now this is now winter mm -hmm. it's like you are you are you are you want to agree as a group mm -hmm. this is now winter we have to put this one but when you put that in your mind and say i want to best to be based on what is available in my farm mm -hmm. and produce what my farm has the potential to do you will be able to produce almost like you might be just the one who has got that produce but look at uh, i want to give an example of last time so yeah. i i want to ask is this information accessible to all for everybody to understand that there is a science to this land use planning and mm -hmm. um how are people, you know, ensuring that they also, you know, enjoy that yield? Because you said the farmers before, you know, were yielding, you know, better crops because of this. What about, you know, the farmer today? Do they have access to this information? What we are doing right now is, uh, the good thing is we, the Afro Stain team, is mm -hmm. actually the pioneers of this uh, innovative. So we actually did a research and see that a lot of farmers are not aware of what are the key drivers to their yield. Mm -hmm. So we then come up, okay, say, okay why can't we just make this uh, business, this this uh, lucrative, um, innovative uh, strategy to be available to any person who would want to know how can I increase my yield? I remember, right now the land is a, it's, it's, it's something that is almost in, in need by almost anyone. Mm -hmm. But what you need to do is, if you have got your land like 10 hectares, 5 hectares, mm -hmm. without being forced saying, I want to do 50 hectares, why can't we just focus on that small area so that we can produce high earning crops? I was talking to other, another farmer, he was saying, uh, I need to, to plant 20 hectares of I want to use 20 hectares. Can you come and do a, 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 a irrigation design and installation? I said, okay, before we go to that 20 hectares, mm. how, what mm. is your goal in terms of income? How mm. much do you want to, to get? So we work backwards looking exactly. at all these statistics. That's so true. if I want to say um, I have my livestock mm -hmm. that I want to put maybe for a single hectare, mm -hmm. what is the process? How do I then? Yes. So part of the land use planning involves the assessment of the veld where we assess the natural grasses within your particular area. So by assessment that we have to assess is that grasses, are those grasses um, easily digested by the plant or are they palatable enough? If a plant if an animal wants to eat that grass is it able to eat all of the grasses that are within that area mm -hmm. or it is going to select so if we assess that mm -hmm. and see okay this is my area i've got 20 hectares i've got a hectare and from that hectare i'm going to get maybe 5750 kgs from that hectare we then assess okay a general livestock a general beast area or a cow weighs about 500 kgs and we did we assess and determine okay if i've got 20 beasts which are weighing 500 kgs how much uh, how many beasts would i need here so mm. we would know okay say so, uh, we we we've got 500 beasts we've got 20 beasts that can fit here because of your natural grasses so in one piece of land you will have like different types of grasses that's true so th which is why we then need to upgrade our grasses and imp input ma 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 the likes of the other grasses like uh, those improved grasses like mm -hmm. katambora like lucene like okay. lab lab and so forth so those mm -hmm. are those are strategies to increase the carrying capacity of that wow land. wow yeah. this is a very phenomenal lesson yeah. unfortunately now because of our time mm -hmm. we have to wrap up and uh, we do hope you will come back because this has really been insightful for myself and i'm sure for all our viewers there's a mm -hmm. lot that we have picked up there in mm -hmm. terms of the science behind the land planning now we want to take a short break and we serve you business breakfast please do stay with us ZITF will be held this year is expected to bring momentum to the implementation of the National Development Strategy 1. President Emerson Mnangagwa 
is approved the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair ZITF to be held from the 20th to the 23rd of July in Blawayo. The ZITF has in the past been used successfully as a forum to showcase what Zimbabwe offers and has on numerous occasions attracted international investors and foreign direct investment. The last trade fair was held in 2019 running under the theme Propagating Industrial Growth through trade and investment. The 2020 edition was shelved due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The broader vision of hosting the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair is to consolidate Zimbabwe's economic transformation process. Davidson Mandira, ZBC News, Harare. Government has announced the new producer prices for countries' strategic crops uh, with a command with command rather a contracted a maize pegged at thirty-two thousand Zimbabwe dollars per ton. Let's get that story coming up.